Welcome back. It's still Plus Politics. And away from the lucky shootings, let's talk raw politics now. Governor Dave Umahi of Ebony says, of Ebony State has received a commendation from President Muhammadu Buhari for defecting from the PDP to the APC. The president praised the Ebony State governor, saying his defection was a bold move based on principle, not coercion from anyone. Before defecting, Umayi had said he had plans to defect due to the injustice the Southeast suffered in the hands of opposition party. With me to discuss this further, we have the man I call Monday Onyekaji Obani. Uh, we, but for this discussion, I'm going to be referring to him as Monday Obani, a legal practitioner. Good evening, Monday Obani. Yes, Kayode, thank you uh, for having me. How are you this evening? Yeah, I'm great. I'm fine. Uh, I can see that you have to stop by to be part of this discussion. Okay, let's look at um, the back and forth by politicians. Uh, mm -hmm. We've had cases of uh, the governor of uh, River State saying that he should rather tell us that it's because of his presidential <coughs> bid and not saying that uh, the South is, is being treated unfairly in PDP. Hence, he has to try his luck in APC. What do you make out of this back and forth by politicians before we look at the Southeast in 2023? Well, I, I don't want to join the, in the fray uh, <laughs> of the altercation between uh, Wike and uh, uh, Engineer Omahi. Uh, I will concentrate on Omahi's position. Omahi said that the reason why he is uh, defecting uh, to APC is because of the fact that uh, PDP has not been too fair uh, to the Eastern region, and that uh, he gave account uh, of people like uh, uh, Alex Ekweme, the former vice uh, president of the country, who were the forerunners of PDP, and who also was excluded from the political process even by that same PDP. And so his reason now for leaving PDP is uh, the fact that he he felt that uh, the PDP do not have uh, the southern eastern region in contemplation even for 2023 and he has found that out and that is the reason why he according to him left PDP for APC uh, so it's important we get the narrative right so he is of the opinion that PDP has not been fair in terms of uh, a zoning arrangement and that even for 2023 he has found out you know from the grapevine that there is no contemplation of making room for the south uh, southeastern region uh, uh, in their equation, and so he had to leave for a political party. Maybe that may have given him uh, maybe promise you know that they will consider the Igbos or the southern eastern region in 2023. That, that's my assumption. Okay. He has not said so expressly. Yes. Okay. Uh, trust me, I'm going to make you talk <laughs> talk politics as much as you want to insist on the law. But let's look at yes. some of your recent writings where. You said that um, it would be injustice to deny the yes. Southeast presidency in 2023. And for mm. David Umahi, um, or Dave Umahi, people would say, that's a smart move. Let's not put all our eggs in one basket. Let's not make it yes. look like it's only PDP that can make us achieve our, our dream of becoming the president. Uh, do you also share that opinion and like we also hear that some governors may also join him in APC. Yeah, if the, if the southern eastern region uh, do not come together and speak with one voice uh, concerning the desire for them to produce the presidency in 2023, uh, the other regions will not take them serious. So it's important we begin to point that out now from every direction. And that unity of purpose, because uh, like they say power is not served a la carte. You have to push for it. You have to make a move. And that's why the move of uh, Engineer Mahi at this uh, point in time uh, should be should not be condemned the way some people are doing. He has made a statement. He has made a point. And my desire and my, my request uh, for my Igbo brothers is for them to come together with one solid voice and demand the fact that they should be considered in the equation of 2023. Now, I have been an advocate of fairness uh, in the political process in this country. I remember vividly when President Yaradua was uh, actually 
given the opportunity by President Obasanjo after he after he, he served this country for eight solid years. Uh, the power returned to North, and the President Yeradua, the late Yeradua, was uh, was was the president. And uh, uh, in between, he, he, he you know the the, the Tistenio, he died. And I was of the opinion that the Northern region should be allowed to complete their eight years uh, tenure, that they should allow another Northerner to be given the opportunity of contesting 2011 general election. But some of my uh, people in Nigeria, both from the North and some of them from the Southern part, felt that uh, President Jonathan should run. And they, 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 they really supported, including President Obasanjo, which I also felt that President Obasanjo at that point in time really misfired and probably is part of the problem that we're having today. And so people were saying that President Jonathan should run, and I felt that that's not right. That President Jonathan should have waited <coughs> for the Northerners to complete their tenure. And after the completion of their tenure, the power will come back to the South. Maybe we can go back, maybe go to, to, to the minority in order to give them that opportunity. But they said President Jonathan should run, and he ran. And people say that they're going to make his governance, uh, you know, uh, very, I mean, make his government very ungovernable. And they succeeded in doing that. And that's why in 2015, uh, President uh, uh, President uh, uh, Jonathan said uh, bid to to complete his eight years was actually truncated. Uh, at that point, uh, President Buhari came in, and President Buhari now is going to complete his uh, eight years tenure in 2023. Now that there has been this informal arrangement, it's important to understand this. There has been this informal arrangement between North and South, you know, uh, to re actually rotate power. Power started 1999 with the South has gone back to the North. Now the North has completed their eight, we complete their eight years in 2023. Okay. Now it is important that power comes back to the South. Now if power comes back to the South, for a country that is clearly, you know, uh, on the side of equity, for a country that loves justice, for a country that loves unity of this nation, for a country that is patriotic, for a people that love this particular country, what would be the right thing to do? Is that they allow the, 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 the Southern region, you know, Southern Eastern region to to be given that opportunity of pro okay. producing a president. Mando Bani. I am not arguing, I'm not arguing that it should be given to them a la carta. They have to come together. That's what I'm saying. Beautiful. That the move that this man has made at this point in time is very strategic. Very People strategic. People must come together Mando in Bani. order to demand that this is our right, that they should be allowed to, because they're a major stakeholder in Mando Nigeria's Bani. political equation. I, I want you to, I, I know you have so much to tell us, but so I want you to maximize yeah. all the angles okay. that we, we still have left. For example, um, why some political pundits felt that was a smart one, but the attendant reaction sounds disturbing to them again. When you have the senators from his state, you have the House of Reps disowning him, not only saying that we are not following you, they are saying that he's ungrateful. And we also have people from other regions. Don't you think this is already a setback for this man? Because you're supposed to come to the party with your political capital. Yes, I, I also think that he may have uh, you know, made some political uh, uh, mistake by not actually discussing exhaustively and carrying his constituents al along in this uh, foray. In this, this is a clear a journey he has embarked upon. I think that a political pundit that understands the political uh, situation currently in the state and his constituency uh, should have consulted widely and ensure that by the time he made that move that he did, there will be a major positive reaction from his from the membership, you know, of his uh, of his constituents. I mean, from the state where he hails from. But unfortunately, I don't think he did. He may have done it in a manner that uh, showed that he was going uh, alone, and that is not clearly a good sign. But for me. He has made a political statement that is very, very strategic at this point in time. And I think that major stakeholders should look at what he supports. My, 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 my consolation is that virtually everyone that spoke, you know, about his movement said we are not against the both producing presidency. We are totally in support of the reason he has advanced. But his move without carrying all others along is what people, I think, are complaining about. So I think that was a major uh, defect in, in this move he has made. But uh, as for the message that he has actually uh, given out, the message that the Igbos must be considered in the equation of 2023, to me, that again is, is very, very important and opposite. Mando Bani, I'm a, I'm a political journalist and uh, for some time now, I am quite interested in how this will play out. And uh, this next question, some will consider it a social media discussion. Some will even consider it this should be discussed at the vendor stand. But I want to ask you pointedly so that even people in the social media can listen to it. What is that question? 
I've had issues like, even if the Southeast is going to be a president, it shouldn't come from a state like a boy state. And I'm asking, why, what kind of discrimination could that be? Can you explain what that means? I think that when the time comes for who is going to be uh, the choice of the board, and I think it's important also we speak with one voice, when that opportunity is given, we don't want a situation where we're going to have over 20 or 30 presidential candidates coming from the southeastern region, because that would clearly send a wrong signal uh, to the entire, you know, uh, the, the other zones, because they will want a situation where Igbos will come with one voice and present a very credible uh, candidate that will be clearly acceptable, not only to the eastern region, but also to the southwest and to the northern region. And so to me, when the time comes, you know, for that choice to be made, of course, you know that what is even happening now is that even the younger ones in the, in the Federation are coming together in order to determine what will happen in 2023. The NSAS protest is going to change so many things in our political equation. If the young ones come together and say, look, will we choose this particular person? Because of their numerical strength, they may make the entire difference in 2023. So for me, the message that I want to derive out that makes a lot of sense from what uh, Engineer Maya has done is to send a signal that Igbos must be considered by the two major political parties that is in this country in 2023. That is not going to be business as usual where Igbos are, you know, are taken for a ride or, are, you know, they don't consider them and so oh, I mean, why this is a, a particular, uh, you know, tribe, you know, with major uh, uh, stakeholding holding in the country, and they and they have the population all over the scattered all over the all over the country. As far as in 1956, all when the population was counted, Igbos were second in number, if you remember, you know. But all of a sudden, they are no longer being considered in almost in virtually everything that is being done in the country. And that is again to me is worrisome. So he has sent a signal. So when the time comes as to who will be the representative of the post, you know, for the for the office of the presidency, I think that particular choice will be made. For now, the man has sent a signal that the post must be considered, and that to me is very key. Okay, good. While we continue to look at the prospect of an Igbo presidential ticket in APC, let's quickly look inward into PDP. Now, for the man to have taken that decision, some would say that it could be either way, politically, it could mean to send a signal that please don't take this zone for granted by giving them ticket, or it could be that mm -hmm. all signs are showing that someone from the Southeast is not likely to get a ticket because some have said, oh, Atiku might come back in 2023. We have had the likes of uh, Body George also expressing intention to run. And so what's the prospect that the Igbos will be given a chance? So if you were to speak to PDP, do you see any prospects there? Well, I'm so happy with the reaction of PDP concerning the defection of uh, Engine Omahi. Uh, what they said is that, look, on the issue of zoning, they have not taken any definite uh, decision uh, and they have not excluded Igbos in the equation. But that uh, the, the move that uh, Engine Omahi made was very premature, that he should have uh, sought to get to know the intention of uh, PDP and, and they will do that at the appropriate time. So to me, for them to speak in such manner uh, shows the fact that there was no time they sat and said, look, Igbos will not be taken into consideration in the equation. That, to me, is very significant. And I think also the, the handwriting uh, of what this man has done is to look to tell all the other political parties that uh, the Southeastern region shouldn't be taken for granted, you know, so that there must be a consideration. Of course, we are aware that President Buhari has actually commended, you know, in a very heavy manner, uh, the movement of uh, Engine Omahi into APC. And, and he considered that move both. But I also understand that, let me assume that the president understands the reason why he left uh, PDP to APC, because the message is that PDP was not contemplating, you know, uh, taking Igbos into consideration. So if the president of the country who is in APC now is now commending what he has done, I think also you understand the message that Omai has actually passed, that uh, Igbos also should not be taken uh, okay. uh, out of consideration, that they must be considered both by APC and by PDP in the next dispensation, and that is very critical. Thank you so much, uh, Monday Onyekachi Ubani. We popularly call MOU for your time. Thank you for stopping you. by to be part of this discussion. Thank you, my brother. I appreciate you. Yeah. And to our viewers, uh, it's almost over, but it's not yet over. We'll take a breather, and when we return, I'll be giving you my take. Please don't go anywhere.
Here's my take. Why some of the minister's comments would have passed as comic relief, but for the seriousness attached to this matter, I will not make a joke of this issue. Sadly, it is another case of it that it has to take foreign media to elicit the rapid reaction from the federal government. Many reports almost similar to the revelation by CNN has rather been greeted by sanctions and some forms of clampdown for their reportage here locally. It is quite interesting to see the federal government call for sanction of CNN. However, the story turns, however the story turns out, the critical questions include whether one or two who shot the confirmed two they were dead, who ordered the shooting, since the Hami insisted there was no shooting, it would be silly for anyone to claim they were shot by hoodlums. If indeed that narrative is put out there, it should be very easy to apprehend the culprit without further delay. Till justice is served and seen to have been served, the conversation will not end from this side. And that's my take on the discussion tonight. Plus Politics returns tomorrow, same time, on the same station. I remain yours truly, Kayode Ladende, saying bye for now.